In this video, I'm going to teach you George Benson's Secret of the Two Chords. My name is Chase Maddox. I'm a jazz guitarist and educator based in Miami, Florida. If you stick around to the end of this video, I'm going to show you how this one concept will make it easier to improvise, easier to play fast lines, and simplify even the hardest jazz tunes. So just give me 15 minutes of your time and I will have you playing and understanding George Benson ideas that you did not think were possible for you. Let's get into it. So we're going to start off just with the diatonic chords in a C major scale. And we'll get into what this secret of the two chords means. So in the key of C, we have C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G7, A minor, B minor 7 flat 5, and then back to C major. So I'm just making seventh chords, four note chords, using only the notes in the C major scale. Now, if we group these chords, we realize something. And this is what Benson realized when he simplifies things into his secret of the two chords. We have some chords here that have this major third of our key, the E. And that would be C major, E minor, and A minor. And then we have some chords that have the fourth note, the F. And those chords would be D minor, F major, G7, and B minor 7 flat 5. And so this whole secret of the two chords that Benson uses to simplify any possible chord is that some of those chords have the E, which gives it a major sound. That's the first way he thinks about it, major. So C major has that major third, the E. And then the other way is just going up a whole step to the minor, D minor. And that F note, the chords that have F, that's the minor third in this D minor, D and F. So we have two different categories here. I'm going to refer to them as categories because when we're talking about the concept of this secret of the two chords, Benson's not really talking about a strict major chord or minor chord. He's really talking about these categories of chords that fit within this C major and chords that fit within this D minor. That's the major and minor distinction here. So let's see why, why group them in this way. And the reason is because when we have notes that fall on downbeats, we perceive those as important notes in an improvised solo, melody, whatever. So any of the chords that share common chord tones, the lines that we would play over those can be exactly the same. That's what Benson realized. So if we have C major, we can play the same exact line, same exact idea that we can over E minor or A minor. And I'm gonna show you in a second. And this is because they share chord tones and a good line, a good improvised line, will focus on those same notes. So let's take this example and we'll just stick with a line that's diatonic to the key of C. So the first line sounds like this. So in this line, this is over C major now, the strong beats, especially beats three, beats one, we land on the E. E, E, and resolving on E. So I made this line specifically so that we can really understand what is being emphasized here. Now what if we play that same exact line, but over E minor seven? Well, we'd still be emphasizing E's, which is a chord tone, the root of E minor seven. So it should still work. Let's take a listen. So it still works for E minor seven. And now let's try it over A minor seven. Those same strong beats, now the E will be the fifth of A minor. So let's, let's try it on that one. remember how these chords are grouped, there's one more line I want to show you that's a master line that uses all three of these chord types in one line. So we're going to use E minor 7, A minor 7, and C major 7 so that you can really easily re recall which arpeggios and which chords go together. So that one sounds like this. Now 
let's do this same idea, but for our minor category of chords for D minor seven, F major, G seven, and B minor seven flat five. For D minor, we're going to use a line that focuses on the note D, which works over all of these chords in this category. So on the D minor seven, that D is going to be the root. Let's do it for F major seven. Over the F major seven, we get the sixth, which gives it like an F six type of sound. We also have that B natural in there, giving it sort of a Lydian with the sharp 11. B minor seven flat five. Now let's use a master line for this minor category so that we can remember all of the arpeggios and chords that fit within this type of chord. We're going to do this in the context of a two five one since the D minor seven and G seven can all be simplified into this minor type category. So those examples just demonstrate the concept here. Which chords do we think of as major type and which chords do we think of in this minor type? So right now, C major, E minor, and A minor are all C major type in Benson's mind. And then D minor, F major, G7, and B minor seven flat five are all D minor type. Let's now look at some actual lines that Benson plays where we can see this in action. See how he actually uses this approach to create real bebop vocabulary. The first example here is a short 2-5. This is in Olio, um, G minor and C7. And for this whole measure, he's really approaching this just like G minor. So he's simplifying that C7 into this G minor category. This is something that a lot of guitarists do. <laughs> say that he's simplifying into G minor because all of the focus is on these notes from the G minor triad. B flat, D, and then an enclosure to that G. Let's look at another example, this time from off the top, which is a longer 2-5. And this really shows us how when Benson's thinking about one of these chord types, he's thinking about any of the chords within that category. In this case, for this 2-5, he's going to be thinking about any of the four chords within that minor category. So the line sounds like this. So we have a C minor seven and an F seven. And what Benson is playing is he's using the E five major, which is within that same category there. And then the A minor seven flat five arpeggio on the way up for the F seven. This ability to then access any of the chords within that category is really one of the specialties of Benson. We'll look at another example now where over a static minor chord, he's accessing all of the other arpeggios related to that. So in this example, we have a B flat minor seven chord, and this is in the context of the key of D flat. So that B flat minor is the sixth. Now, if you remember in our initial thought process on this, we had the C major, E minor, and A minor, the one chord, the three chord, and the six chord. So because we're using that six chord now, B flat minor is the six in the key of D flat, the other arpeggios we want to access would be D flat major seven and F minor seven, the one and the three in this key of D flat. So what does Benson do here? Over this B flat minor, he plays D flat major seven arpeggio, he plays F minor seven arpeggio over the B flat minor seven. So all three chords here are represented. Again, this is the major type sound because it fits with the key center, the major key center, in this case, D flat. So this is a double time lick that sounds like this. Now that example comes from Texas Tango. It's a live recording with Robin Ford that you can find on YouTube. 
The final example here that I want to show you guys before we get into how this simplifies jazz tunes, it's mind blowing how Benson thinks in this way because it's so simple and yet allows him to create such amazing harmonic choices. The last example here adds a little bit of a, another layer to this. And we're gonna look at Olio again. So on D7 here, Benson does something really interesting. Now remember the dominant chords we want to think about as the related two chord. So D7, the two that's part of that key center would be A minor. So we think about A minor as our minor type. What Benson does is we don't always have to treat the minor type as a Dorian sound. We can also treat it like a melodic minor sound if we want to access some of these more colorful extension notes. So if we want to get sharp 11 for this D7, we can look at A melodic minor, and that's exactly what Benson does here. <laughs> So in this example, we get a clear understanding of his A melodic minor because he plays the A minor major 7 chord over this D7 sharp 11. The last thing I want to look at, and probably the most important part for you guys, is how you can apply this to actual tunes that you're learning, tunes that you know, so you can simplify your whole life and put these ideas into your actual playing. We'll take a look first at the song Take the A Train, since that's a very simple example of doing this. And then we'll look at the more difficult tune, Stella by Starlight. So you can see that even on a difficult tune, this approach still works and simplifies things so much. Okay, so on Take the A Train, we're just gonna look at the A section. So we have C major, going to D7, usually sharp 11, and then D minor, G7 to C. So on C major, we're going to use the major type ideas, C major, A minor, E minor 7, right? On D7, like we just discussed, like we just played with Olio, we say, okay, that dominant chord goes with the minor type, which is A minor. If we want to get that sharp 11, we do A melodic minor, like we just saw. Um, but either way, it's A minor type. And then on D minor and G7, because it's a 2-5, those both come from that same family, D minor. You just use the same type as the two chord, back to C major. So all of this simplifies to just C major type, A minor type for the D7, D minor type for the 2-5, and then back to C major type. You can even take this another step, and this gets me into the way that Pat Martino actually approaches this. If you guys wanna hear about Pat Martino's approach, let me know in the comments and I'll do another lesson on that. So because the C major type goes into an A minor type, and both of those have the same chord tones, we can actually simplify that whole first four measures as just a C major kind of idea. And you can play that over that whole spot. If you wanna play that G sharp to get that sharp 11, with that A melodic minor, you can add that in as well. But just to really simplify things, we can do C major type for that whole first four measures, meaning C major, E minor, A minor seven, then D minor seven, D minor approach, back to C major approach. So it's really just two different chord types. This gets us to that secret of the two chords. Okay, lastly, let's see if even a difficult tune like Stella by Starlight can be simplified using this approach. So. Next to me, I'll put the lead sheet here so you can see we have a lot of different chords we're dealing with, such as minor seven flat five and dominant chords that are altered. So I wanna talk about those really quickly. The minor seven flat five, like we learned from B minor seven flat five, comes from D minor type. So we go up a minor third. The first chord in Cell by Starlight, E minor seven flat five, we go up a minor third, which gives us G minor. So that E minor 7 flat 5, we're going to think about like G minor type of ideas. What about the next chord, A7, A7 altered? Well, without getting into too much theory here, we actually can just move up another minor third to B flat minor, and that will give us notes that work really well over A7 altered. So simplifying this whole chart, I'll put it right next to me, um, 
we can get the major or minor types for each of these. And because the two fives take up a lot of the progression, each of those two measures can be simplified into one and we'll get a bunch of different chord types that we've already seen within this progression. So starting off that first four measures, we're gonna do G minor type for E minor seven flat five into B flat minor for the A altered. So the C minor seven and F seven, we're just gonna use the C minor type. Then we go to F minor and B flat seven. So we're just gonna use F minor since that's its own two five to E flat major, major chord, just use E flat major type into A flat seven. That two five would have been E flat minor. So E flat minor type back to B flat major. We can use B flat major type. Another minor two five, same one we had before into D minor. In this case, B flat major is our home key. So that D minor can be thought of as the three chord. So that B flat major type goes to B flat minor for the two five with B flat minor. Resolves to F major. Same minor two five we have before. Now going to a new minor two five, the A minor seven five five to D seven altered, which would use that C minor type and then E flat minor type. And we won't get into the bridge. So let me demonstrate a simple improvised solo over this main section of Stella by Starlight. And I'll call out these different major or minor types that I'm thinking of as the chord changes are going. Hopefully you can see how it really simplifies the improvisational approach. G minor, B flat minor, C minor for both, F minor to E flat major, E flat minor, B flat major, G minor, B flat minor. F major, G minor into B flat minor, and then C minor. So give this a try over something like Stella by Starlight or take the A train if that's more your speed and see how George Benson's secret of the two chords can really help with your approach, give you an easier method to improvise. Let me know what you guys think, what your biggest takeaway is in the comments. Please hit that like button if you haven't and hit subscribe if you're new to the channel. I have a ton of other George Benson videos. I have a whole playlist of them you guys can check out here. Um, hopefully we'll see you guys in another video. If you're interested in learning jazz standards, I also have a whole online jazz guitar program called Chase's Guitar Academy. You can get a free 14 day trial with the link in the description below. Try out everything, no risk to you. Um, it has personal access to me and all of my courses, eBooks, etc. It's great. We have 100 plus members all over the world and we have a blast. Hope to see you guys there. Thanks.